I still hear a lot of fans asking, am I gonna come back and be Yeah, am I gonna come back and be I think they could have um, a, a huge franchise off of it. Say it how it is. Terrence baby. Howard to Iron Man. <laughs> up. Uh, all right. The person that I helped become Iron Man to re-up for the second one yep. took the money that was supposed to go to me and push me out. Well, money has always been an issue in the industry, it appears that Terrence Howard has reached a breaking point, expressing grievances about his experiences within the industry. He has suggested that something unjust has occurred in his career. Now, reportedly, Robert Downey Jr. has entered the conversation, shedding light on the circumstances surrounding Howard's behavior and offering insight into his own perspective. Nothing better than shooting scenes in Veve, Switzerland, <laughs> in old age pr while you are booming. Terrence Howard is undoubtedly familiar to both movie and TV audiences. With an extensive list of screen credits documented on IMDb, Howard's career received a significant boost when he landed the role of Jackie Jackson in the 1992 made-for-TV movie The Jacksons, an American dream depicting the story of The Jackson 5. Following this breakout performance, he starred alongside Martin Lawrence in the 2000 film Big Mama's House, which further elevated his profile in the industry. Howard Howard's talent led to notable projects, including his role in the ensemble drama Crash, which won the Best Picture Oscar at the 2006 Academy Awards. And the Oscar goes to Crash. In the following years, Howard secured the lead role in the rap drama Hustle and Flow, a performance that earned him an Academy Award nomination for Best Actor. His diverse portfolio also included notable projects such as Iron Man, Disney's The Princess and the Frog, the lead role in the short-lived spin-off Law and & Order, L.A., and a significant part in director Lee Daniels' The Butler. When Daniels was assembling the cast for his television series Empire, Howard was tapped for the starring role of rapper and mogul Lucius Lyon. The show proved to be a resounding success, running from 2015 until 2020. I love what you did with the house. Open up a track for me. However, alongside his on-screen triumphs, Howard is the one actor who is hard to work with. Terrence Howard has garnered a reputation for being challenging to work with, a label that some have attributed to his passionate nature. According to an unnamed television executive cited in the New York Post, Howard is known for being quick to anger and for his uncompromising demeanor when things don't go his way. When you said, after you complete these 15 episodes of Empire, you gotta walk away for a while or forever? For good. I'm, I'm, I mean, everyone keeps trying to tell me, don't say it's forever. However, Howard himself sees his behavior differently. Reflecting on an early experience in his career, he recounted to the New York Times an incident on the set of The Cosby Show. At just 19 years old, he landed a minor role on the hit sitcom, only to later discover he had been cut from the episode. Incensed by this, Howard confronted Bill Cosby directly, insisting on his dignity as a fellow man. This confrontation resulted in consequences for Howard's career, as the casting agent refused to work with him again. I was on, I had an opportunity to go and be on The Cosby Show, and I remember walking around it and watching Bill Cosby. For Howard, this incident established a pattern for his professional life. He explained that he is willing to stand up for what he believes in, even if it means facing repercussions. Terrence Howard landed what could be considered his career-defining role when he was cast as Jim Rhodey Rhodes, also known as in the 2008 blockbuster film Iron Man. Notably, Howard was the first actor selected for the role and commanded the highest salary, reportedly earning $3.5 million with the potential for an additional $5 million if a sequel materialized. He even purportedly offered to reduce his own salary by $1 million to facilitate the casting of Robert Downey Jr., whose well-publicized struggles with substance abuse made the studio hesitant to hire him. It turns out <laughs> that the person that I helped become Iron Man when it was time for to do re, to re up for the second one, yep. took the money that was supposed to go to me. However, when Iron Man 2 was greenlit, Howard claimed he received the news that his role would be diminished along with the promised salary. Allegedly, his agent tersely dismissed the studio's decision with an expletive laden response before cutting off communication. Subsequently, Don Cheadle assumed the role of Rhodey. Are you Tony Stank? 
Yes, this is this is Tony Stank. Howard revealed feeling snubbed by Downey, asserting that his attempts to reach out were met with silence until he left a message emphasizing the support he had extended in the past. According to Howard, Downey never responded, leaving him feeling slighted, particularly considering what he perceived as the financial gain Downey enjoyed at his expense. Howard suggested that Downey profited to the tune of $100 million, indirectly referencing Downey's substantial earnings from subsequent Marvel films and back-end deals. Terrence Howard and Robert Downey Jr. haven't had the best relationship in the last 10 years, and now he's blaming him for losing $100 million. In 2008, the release of Iron Man marked the beginning of the most successful franchise in Hollywood history, catapulting Robert Downey Jr. into the ranks of A-list superstardom. Virtually every individual associated with the film, including Kevin Feige, John Favreau, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Paul Bettany, has since become an integral part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. However, one actor departed the superhero flick feeling deeply aggrieved by Marvel Studios. Terrence Howard, initially cast as Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes, Tony Stark's right-hand man in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, seemed like an ideal fit for the role. However, despite his promising start, Howard's journey with the franchise took an unexpected turn, leading to his departure before Iron Man 2 Inches began filming. Case. We had a three-picture deal that you know, that before we did the first one, everything was already set out what was going to take place with that. They chose not to honor that deal. The decision to part ways with Howard stemmed from a variety of factors, including conflicts on set and contentious financial negotiations. Despite his portrayal of Rhodey being well received, behind the scenes tensions and disagreements with the studio ultimately led to his exit from the franchise. While Howard's departure prevented him from appearing in subsequent Marvel films like Avengers Infinity War, the circumstances surrounding his exit underscore the complex dynamics at play within the entertainment industry. Because they wanted to go in the direction of having Robert remain as the lead because <laughs> supposed to take over the second one. Oh. And so they they gave me um, an offer I couldn't refuse. Terrence Howard's collaboration with Marvel Studios mirrored the uneasy alliance of Tony Stark and Steve Rogers. While their partnership may have shown promise initially, it was fraught with discord, ultimately leading to conflict. Howard's reputation for being difficult to work with preceded him, casting a shadow over his tenure with Marvel. Known for his irascible attitude, Howard openly admitted to the challenges of collaborating with him. This demeanor, ingrained in him since his early acting days, often proved detrimental to his career. Career. During his role in The Best Man, Howard's insistence on delivering lines in his preferred serious tone clashed with the production's vision for the scene. I don't give a damn what y'all say. Ain't nothing natural about no monogamy. These incidents underscored Howard's propensity for friction in collaborative settings, setting the stage for his tumultuous relationship with Marvel Studios. According to reports from the New York Post and Industry Insiders, Terrence Howard's reputation as a hothead and his need for control over every aspect of his work have been well documented. These traits, combined with a history of A accusations, created a challenging dynamic for any collaborative effort. Marvel Studios, known for its own assertiveness and occasional clashes with talent over creative differences has seen its fair share of high-profile departures, including Edward Norton, Edgar Wright, and Patty Jenkins. As is evident, I got more worried about it. Uh, you know, I, 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 was, I was very interested because I loved it. I, I, I'm not, like, snobby about it. In the mid-2000s, Terrence Howard's star was on the rise bolstered by acclaimed performances in films like Hustle and & Flow and Crash. Marvel recognized his talent and offered him a substantial paycheck, reportedly between $3.5 and $4.5 million, to portray Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes in Iron Man. Surpassing even Robert Downey Jr.'s initial earnings, Howard became not only the first actor signed for the film, but also the highest paid star in the entire production. Gut feeling that this movie was going to be really no, transformative? Oh, no, check this out. I made $12,000 dollars for doing Hustle and Flow. Initially, Howard's collaboration with Marvel appeared promising, with the studio even promising him an additional $5 million if Iron Man 2 inches moved forward. However, despite the sequel's confirmation, Howard never got the chance to reprise his role as the reasons behind this abrupt departure involve a complex interplay of personal and professional dynamics, ultimately resulting in Howard's exit from the franchise. The conclusion of Iron Man holds one of the most poignant moments in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, as Terrence Howard's character considering donning the suit utters the bittersweet words, next time baby. However, this next time never materialized for Howard. Reports from the set of Iron Man suggested that Howard's behavior was causing friction among colleagues, 
earning him a reputation for being difficult to work with. Additionally, director John Favreau reportedly had reservations about Howard's portrayal of Rhodey, leading to extensive reshoots and edits. You know, I was mentioning in your intro, you know, the fact that, like, this whole thing started with, I remember when you were working on that Iron Man movie, yeah. and when you were, you were doing, you had the drawing. As preparations for Iron Man 2 inches began, Marvel sought to reduce Howard's character's prominence in the sequel. This decision escalated into a financial dispute. Howard claimed he had a three-film contract with Marvel, entitling him to $8 million for the sequel. However, due to the aforementioned conflicts, the studio purportedly offered him only one $1 million, significantly less than his initial earnings. Howard, taken aback by the studio's stance, described it as the surprise of a lifetime. Unwilling to accept such a substantial pay cut, Howard opted to part ways with the franchise. The financial impasse marked the end of his tenure as Rhodey in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. You walked away from that looking like the bad guy, looking like you were difficult, no, Terrence is holding threw. out for more money, demanding, no, no. I want $100 million for this. No. Following Terrence Howard's departure from the role of Rhodey, Marvel wasted no time in seeking out a replacement. According to Rolling Stone, the day after the fallout with Howard, Marvel was already in discussions with Don Cheadle. With a stellar portfolio that includes standout performances in films like Hotel Rwanda and the Ocean's Eleven trilogy, Cheadle was a natural choice to step into the armor for Iron Man 2. You're in the right place. Thank you for that! Never dropping that, by the way. Interestingly, Cheadle's involvement with the Marvel Cinematic Universe almost predates Howard's tenure. Reports suggest that Cheadle was initially considered for the role of Rhodey in the first Iron Man film, indicating that Marvel had him in mind for the character even before Howard's casting. As the actor explained to MTV News, I met very early on before the first one with Jon Favreau and the team, and I guess there was a split, some people Terrence, some people me. Howard backs that story up, telling the radio show Sway in the morning via Cinema Blend, really initially they wanted Don in that role, but my agent pushed me in. So I never had any with Don about it. You know, we get to, we always get to have these sort of down notes in a good way. I think there's always a lot of eye candy and very dramatic things happening and big spectacular fights and really amazing. James Rhodey Rhodes debuted in Iron Man Hash 118, created by David Michelini, Bob Layton, John Byrne, Glynis Wine, and Irving Watanabe. From his inception, Rhodey became an integral part of Tony Stark's narrative, evolving into a hero in his own right and eventually donning the armor. Where it comes to Rhodey, it, I'm glad that this is something that's carried through and that is, you know, wasn't just dropped. It's a line that is, uh, it actually goes through both of the films. However, when Terrence Howard assumed the role of Rhodey in the first Iron Man film, reports surfaced of a rift between him and Robert Downey Jr., allegedly stemming from pay disputes. Entertainment Weekly detailed Howard's purported difficulties on set and director Jon Favreau's dissatisfaction with his performance, prompting reshoots. Adding to the complexity, Howard was reportedly the highest paid actor in the film, an uncommon situation for a supporting character. Ultimately, Don Cheadle took over the role of Rhodey in Iron Man 2 Inches and subsequent Marvel Cinematic Universe installments, marking the end of Howard's tenure as the character. According to Howard, a pay dispute over the Iron Man sequel combined with a lack of support from Downey Jr. led to his dismissal from the role and the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And guess who got the millions I was supposed to get, Howard said in a 2015 Rolling Stone interview. Downey Jr. got the whole franchise, so I've actually given him $100 million, which ends up being a $100 million loss for me from me trying to look after somebody. When questioned about rumors linking his departure from Iron Man two inches to pay disputes involving Robert Downey Jr. and future sequels, Terrence Howard addressed the issue on Bravo's Watch What Happens Live. Howard asserted that the deals were pre-negotiated, but he was offered considerably less to reprise his role as James Rhodes, reportedly around $1 million. Additionally, Howard claimed that Downey Jr. did not respond to his attempts to seek assistance regarding the matter. We did a three-picture deal, so that means that you did the deal ahead of time, a certain amount for the first one, a certain amount for the second one, a certain amount for the third, Howard told Bravo. Via today, they came to me with the second and said, look, we will pay you one eighth of what we contractually had for you because we think the second one will be successful with or without you. And I called my friend that I helped get the first job. 
and he didn't call me back for three months. In the same conversation, Howard reiterated that he loved Downey Jr. and wished him the best. Downey Jr. previously shared a similar sentiment after the casting change in Iron Man 2, telling MTV News, I had nothing to do with that decision. I love Terrence very, very much. That's all I'll say because I haven't talked to him yet. Don Cheadle also stated he wasn't involved in Howard's departure. However, Howard's attitude regarding the situation remained tense. He believed could have created a huge franchise and had a simple message for those involved with the decision to drop him, F him. With Terrence Howard's departure, Marvel swiftly sought out a replacement for James Rhodes, ultimately casting Don Cheadle. According to Rolling Stone, Marvel reached out to Cheadle just a day after parting ways with Howard, solidifying his role as the new Cheadle's involvement with the franchise had been in the works for some time. He revealed that he had early discussions with Jon Favreau and the team before the first Iron Man film, indicating that he was considered alongside Howard from the outset. Really, initially they wanted Don in that role but my agent pushed me in, so I never had any with Don about it," Howard clarified. Taking over as Rhodey in Iron Man 2, Cheadle continued to portray the character in subsequent films including Iron Man 3, where he assumed the identity of the Iron Patriot. He reprised his role in Avengers Age of Ultron and played a pivotal part in the superhero conflict depicted in Captain America Civil Hey, new girl. Everybody in this room is about that superhero life. While Howard harbored no ill feelings towards Cheadle, he maintained a lingering resentment towards Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. The transition from Terrence Howard to Don Cheadle in the role of James Rhodes brought about a notable shift in the character's portrayal. Cheadle's Rhodes appeared more relaxed compared to Howard's uptight demeanor, which provided an interesting contrast to Robert Downey Jr.'s Tony Stark. As the Marvel Cinematic Universe MCU progressed, Rhodey's importance grew significantly. After his debut in Iron Man 2, Cheadle reprised the role in six MCU films, made a cameo in The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, appeared in an episode of What If, and is set to play a significant role in Secret Invasion and the upcoming Wars film. In November 2022, Cheadle mentioned that Armor Wars would serve as a rebirth for Rhodey, exploring his character beyond his relationships with familiar faces and delving into his identity when isolated from others. And we've, we've had moments with Rhodey. Yeah. He's helped other people. Now that he's without his best friend, I mean, where do you think Rhodey's at when we find him in Armor Wars? Uh, at a very different place. However, Rhodey's portrayal in the Secret Invasion TV series faced criticism, adding to the show's overall issues with writing and character decisions. The revelation that Rhodey was a Skrull in the series finale further disappointed fans, with the real James Rhodes having been abducted and replaced for an unknown period, possibly since The Falcon and The Winter Soldier. Marvel Studios now faces the task of redeeming the character of James Rhodes. Many fans are hopeful that Armor Wars will provide an opportunity for Rhodey to shine once again and serve as a fitting conclusion to the legacy of the Iron Man movies. As the last significant connection to the late Tony Stark, Rhodey's role holds particular importance. Despite individual heroism, his origins fighting alongside Stark remain pivotal, especially for the original actor, Terrence Howard, who has found success beyond the MCU. Mr. Stark, please. Yes, dear. Can I have your attention? Absolutely. But for the reason Terrence was fighting with Robert, which was his disturbed past, it seems like his own past was also not clean. In 2001, Terrence Howard faced legal trouble following an alleged altercation with his then-wife, Lori McComas. According to a police report obtained by the the incident occurred during a heated argument over the phone. McComas claimed that Howard her, stating he would come over and harm her if she hung up. She called 911, but Howard allegedly arrived at her location, breaking down a locked door. McComas stated that Howard then grabbed her arm and punched her twice in the face with a closed fist. Apparently, Terrence Howard, you guys know who that is, the guy from, you know, Hustle and Flow. Whoop that chick! Whoop that chick! You know, got a little thing going on with his wife. Police arrived at the scene and Howard reportedly admitted to breaking down the door and hitting his wife. As a result, Howard was arrested and charged with simple A and other offenses. Ultimately, in 2002, he pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of disorderly conduct. Reflecting on the incident in a 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, Howard admitted to losing control and striking his wife in front of their children. While he acknowledged the severity of his actions, he expressed remorse for his behavior, acknowledging that even slapping her was wrong. Moreover, in 2000, Terrence Howard encountered legal trouble stemming from an incident on a flight. According to ABC News, Howard allegedly grabbed a flight attendant by the wrist and became confrontational when asked to return to his seat due to the fastened seatbelt sign being illuminated. He was arrested 
arrested upon landing in Cleveland, Ohio, but was released the following day when the prosecutor determined they lacked jurisdiction to pursue charges. A few years later, Howard had an altercation with a couple in a Philadelphia Pa diner. According to Philadelphia Magazine, Howard reportedly became perturbed when the hostess began to bring Danielle DiStefano and Kevin Saffel to their table, so he stepped in front of them and asked why he wasn't being seated first. When DiStefano told him they were ahead of him in line, he allegedly told her, F you, I wasn't talking to you. Saffel demanded Howard apologize, but the actor A them both instead, punching Saffel in the face and DiStefano in the chest. With Saffel on the floor, Howard supposedly continued him, causing him to lose consciousness, according to court documents and police reports. Howard then fled and attempted to disguise himself. Following the incident, Howard fled the scene and attempted to disguise himself, but was later apprehended by police. While he admitted to the A, Howard claimed he acted in self-defense. Initially charged with simple A and H, Howard ultimately pleaded guilty to a charge of disorderly conduct. Following a tumultuous divorce from his second wife, Michelle Ghent, Terrence Howard found himself entangled in prolonged legal battles over spousal support. In a candid 2015 interview with Rolling Stone, he disclosed that the divorce had drained him financially, leaving him broke as can be. Howard lamented that due to his ex-wife, his earnings from Empire were being withheld for garnishment, expressing the hardship of being a financially strapped movie star. You know, I've been on a long search of inner engineering for a long time. It's taken a while to get to a place. By 2019, the Daily News reported that a judge had finally settled the contentious dispute. Howard was ordered to pay Ghent a sum totaling $1,319,107, including $263,137 in unpaid spousal support and an additional $1,055,970. The same outlet later reported that Howard was additionally ordered to pay Ghent's legal fees, amounting to $909,222. Once the full amount in arrears was determined, the judge planned to issue an assignment order that would in effect garnish his wages, a response to the fact that Empire was about to conclude its sixth and final season and he would no longer be receiving that regular paycheck. We need to have the monies held. He's in the last year of his contract. This is the last bulk of money we can reasonably get before it disappears, Gents divorce lawyer Karen Donahoe told the court. Terrence Howard's prolonged legal feud with his ex-wife Michelle Ghent became a drawn-out and highly visible affair. Following a 2015 hearing, the actor voiced his frustrations to Entertainment Tonight, expressing discontent over the public exposure of his personal life throughout the legal proceedings. Sad that this has to be in a public forum, he lamented, highlighting the discomfort caused by the public scrutiny of his private affairs. Page Six reported that amid Terrence Howard's ongoing legal battles with his ex-wife, his role on the Fox drama Empire was purportedly slated for reduction. Allegations of from Howard's past resurfaced in the media, prompting concerns about his character's portrayal. An anonymous source suggested to the outlet that Howard's character, Lucius Lyon, would be incarcerated in the upcoming season, resulting in fewer appearances on screen. The strategy, the source explained, involved introducing numerous guest stars and celebrity cameos to divert attention from Howard's reduced presence. However, Fox refuted these claims. In a statement to Page Six, the network declared, rumors that Terrence's role in Empire will be scaled back are patently untrue. In 2019, Terrence Howard found himself embroiled in a investigation for potential tax evasion, as reported by The Blast. Documents obtained by the outlet revealed that Howard, along with his wife Miranda Pack and her company, Universal Bridges, were subjects of federal scrutiny for possible financial The actor had reportedly enlisted the services of a attorney and engaged in discussions with investigators. When contacted by People, the United States Attorney's Office in the Eastern District of Pennsylvania declined to confirm or deny the existence of an investigation. All right, so Terrence Howard's been recently hit with the judgment to pay back back taxes of a close to a million dollars. Earlier, the blast had uncovered official records indicating that Howard owed $143,538.61 in unpaid taxes for the year 2010, along with accumulated interest and penalties. These records also warned of potential government seizure of his property and assets if the debt remained unsettled. The outlet further recalled Howard's previous tax issues, including a 2010 lien for $1.1 million in unpaid taxes and and another lien in 2006 exceeding $600,000. However, it appeared that both liens had been resolved by the time the reported 
investigation emerged. In addition to conflicts with ex-wives in the Internal Revenue Service, Terrence Howard also had some issues with his landlord. In 2013, TMZ reported that he was sued for back rent after being evicted from an apartment in New York City. According to court documents obtained by the TAB, Howard's lease ended in November 2012, but he never moved out, remaining in the place until he was formally evicted in May 2013. However, talking about Iron Man, despite not reprising his role as James Rhodes in future installments of Iron Man, Terrence Howard has maintained a successful career in both movies and television. He has appeared in various films, including notable performances in Dennis Villeneuve's Prisoners and Lee Daniels' The Butler. However, his most prominent post-MCU role is as record executive Lucius Lyon in the musical drama series Empire. Howard has also starred in MCU Night Shyamalan's mystery Wayward Pines, the peacock comedy The Best Man, The Final Chapters, and is slated to star alongside Kevin Hart and Samuel L. Jackson in the upcoming Peacock series Fight Night, The Million Dollar Heist. While Howard's trajectory may have diverged from the superhero star path initially envisioned, he has continued to secure engaging roles in the industry. Regarding his alleged feud with Robert Downey Jr., Howard shared in a 2016 Instagram post that things were all good between them. It appears that any animosity Howard may have harbored towards Downey Jr. in the past has since dissipated, indicating a sense of reconciliation between the two actors. One person on the internet wrote, Wow, the entertainment world is really shady. If you are not willing to compromise your self-respect and have your self-worth devalued, they go hard to fade your very existence. Why? Because that is who they are and that is what they do. One more person added, I've been feeling this for a long time now. So sick of seeing our actors compromise their masculinity. Another person went on saying, We are all fed up with it at this point, and it's good to see more people stand their ground and speak up against it. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.